So um, the last week, you know, is probably initially a bit of a novelty for everybody that's not used to normally working at home. You know, we're now working at home so probably initially was a bit of a holiday or, um, but now we're probably a week into it. Um, if you listen to um, the deputy medical officer today, I think she was talking about we could be seeing restrictions for up to six months. So it's really thinking about employees and how they're going to be affected because if it, if there's more than one of you working from home, if there's partners, if you've got children, you know, just working your normal hours is going to be str a struggle for everybody. Um, somebody may have to look after the children, educate them. So it's thinking about one of the demands you're putting on staff, you know, can you rearrange normal meetings to later in the day, having them in the evenings if people have got young children, you know, a meeting at eight o'clock after they put them to bed may be more suitable. Um, or our parents having to split the shifts. Um, so it's thinking about that. Um, it's also thinking about how, how they're affected isolation wise. Um, you know, the, the challenges they may they may face if they live on their own, they're not having any regular contact with people, um, or also being cooped up with people, you know, with their family, as much as they may love them. Um, it's probably a bit like Christmas. Um, Christmas is one of the most stressful times of year for some, some families, everybody's together. Um, and it's thinking of ways of um, talking to people, not just about work, but um, engaging them, you know, so like Phil's doing pub quiz. Um, I know my other half was talking to her sister about doing online board games. Um, lots of things like that, you know, not just having video calls about work, but trying to discuss things and chat about ordinary everyday life. A bit difficult at the moment, you know, for me. I talk to a lot of people about football. That's not going on at the moment. It's, you know, what do we talk about? Um, you know, so it's trying to f think about the impact it's going to have on people that may not normally work at home, how that's affecting them, um, especially as we, it progresses because at the moment it was initially for three weeks and it was going to be reviewed. Is it going to be extended by another three weeks? If we look, by what the Chancellor said about self-employed, he was saying that um, they might, they'll get three months money back dated in June. So does that indicate to us that the restrictions are going to be in place for three months? Um, so it's really thinking about your employees, how you engage with them, um, how you keep them motivated um, as time goes on and what, and being flexible with them you know, um, do they need to work shift patterns and all that type of stuff. Other things to think about working from home. Now, if somebody was regularly working from home, you'd do a workplace assessment, a workstation assessment, or they'd perform a workstation assessment. Now that's not necessarily practical at the moment. You know, we don't know, especially from temporary measures, we don't know how long it's going to go on for. Um, but it's probably giving them some ba simple basic advice. So. The HSC do have a workstation assessment form that you can ask people to fill in. Um, probably initially it's starting with um, making sure, suggesting that they work off a flat surface, if that's a kitchen table, dining table. Um, if they might need specialist equipment like a chair or something like that, do they have a dining room chair that they can use a cushion, give them some extra support? Um, or thinking about where people live. So if somebody lives in a small flat or bed sit, do they actually have anything to put their computer on? So do they need a small fold up table or chair? Um, maybe after a week, some of these things have worked themselves out, but um, it's probably just touching base with staff, seeing after a week, you know, how they found the first week, is, is there anything they need? Um, do they need a monitor or wireless keyboard or mouse? Um, Encouraging them to have their, their screen, the top of the screen roughly in line with the middle of the pupils um, to give better ergonomics working. Um, really just 
again, it's touching base, having that chat, seeing if they need any help or support in regards to that. Um, other things now, um, depending on the environment people are working in, things like face masks. I mean, I was out when I went to the supermarket at the weekend, lots, there's quite a few people who had masks on who were in the queue. Now, masks with COVID-19, coronavirus, um, the main risk is through contact. So that's why the, the advice is to regularly wash your hands. It can, you can, it can maybe um, come through air, people's aerosols. So that's why they say two meters separation. Now, if people are wearing masks, they should be wearing an FFP3 mask suitable for viruses. Um, and anybody that wears a mask for work should be face fit tested. So that should carry on. Now, there might be some challenges at the moment with um, supply of PPE and making sure that people have got masks that they've been face fit tested for. But that should happen as soon as reasonably practical. So if there's only one type of mask, then as soon as it's reasonably practical to arrange face fit testing, um, to be face fit tested. But if there's only one type of mask, then that might, um, that might prove some problems. Um, and again, things like gloves, um, some professions, you know, like the medical industry, um, like NHS, because they're coming into close contact with people, you know, they need to be wearing gloves. But day to day, actually, you, you're going to be taking the gloves off. You then may be coming into contact with whatever you've touched on the glove. So the ad advice is to be making sure you're washing your hands. So as soon as you, if you're wearing gloves, is to make sure you're washing your hands afterwards anyway, um, because that's going to help stop the spread. Um, and encouraging people not to touch their face is the other other one. Other things that um, have been identified since um, the coronavirus outbreak is some workplaces have been um, not allowing delivery drivers to use their welfare facilities. Now, one, that's illegal. Um, and if you are a workplace, um, you need to be letting delivery drivers use your welfare f facilities. Um, but it's also thinking that actually in the last week or so, a lot of the welfare facilities that they might have used generally like McDonald's, McDonald's are usually quite good at allowing people to use their, their toilets and rest facilities are now not open. So they've got a lot less places um, to stop. Um, and again, it's important that they're washing their hands regularly to help stop the spread. Um, and I think that, that's it really, it's really making sure that we're keeping in touch with people you know, um, if we know that even if you don't have any employees, if you've got friends that you know live on their own, is making sure you keep in touch with them by Zoom or Skype or other methods, just because especially as the weeks go on, people are going to become feeling more isolated. Um, I think that's it, really. If anybody's got any questions. So, um with businesses that now have their employees working from home, they've still got the overall health and safety responsibility for those employees, have they, even though they're working from their own home? They do, yes. Yeah, so health, health and safety legislation still applies. Um, a lot will depend on what people are doing from home. So the majority of people are going to be computer-based working, but if anybody's doing, I don't know, taking assembly work home or doing practical things using tools and equipment then again health and safety legislation applies so you need to be making sure that um, they're working in a safe environment so initially you might want to ask them to take a picture of where they're working and how they're working so you can see um, or take a video or something like that so you you can do like an assessment um, is also thinking of the equipment because if they're using their own equipment has it been maintained and everything like that? Can they take equipment home that they use from use at work? Okay. And the other thing, I guess, it, it, it heightens the um, likelihood of not just the, obviously the virus, room, but computer viruses and things like that. People are using their home uh, laptops or their home equipment to access 
work, for example, doesn't that increase the risk of them corrupting the, the, the business server or the business software? I'm guessing, I'm guessing there's potential there. Um, that's probably more an IT person's um, background, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd have, I'd have thought you want to be using things like VPN connections or some sort <coughs> of secure connection that um, you can share that information if it's encrypted somehow. Um, oh. Yeah, um, and also, I guess you've got the risk of. Um, other people in the house you know what information you're working on um data protection if you've got people other people walking behind your screen though they may be your family or relatives you know depending on what you've got on your screen can they see that type of thing yeah, um, yeah. you've got those concerns as well i guess um and yeah i mean the one thing i was doing earlier was putting um a blog together about um business continuity so it's probably actually a good time whilst, if, whilst people are working from home and maybe um, got time to think about it is their business continuity plan so you know if we go back to the beginning of the year we might not nobody probably envisaged where we we're going to be now but there may be um, potential risks that could occur in the business that could affect the business so I don't know somebody digging through um, the fiber cable outside in the road what effect could that have on the business do you have plans in place if there's a fire um what potential things could disrupt your business you know somebody retiring have you got succession plans in place um if you're single sourcing supply chain issues so it gives you probably with the measures people have put put in place in the last week to help keep their business going probably helps them review their business continuity plan as to if a disaster or emergency happens in their business how would they carry on and continue um, so that's probably if there is any positive with the current situation that's possibly one that actually we can sit back and review our con business continuity plans and go if a disaster happens or an emergency what what plans could we put in place well, I think it's been interesting for people, isn't it, this, these circumstances, because certainly some businesses that I talk to that have staff that are normally office-based, they're now having to adapt, um, uh, assuming they still continue with the business as normal, with people working from home. And, and some, I think, are, are questioning, you know, whether this is the model they'll adopt going forward, because if nothing else, it saves them the overheads of a physical office. Mm -hmm. If they can make this work with their staff, remotely you probably lose a little bit of team building and com camaraderie and stuff like that but um you know it's, it's interesting i think how people are adapting and looking at different things um and i think you know people will work in in, in different ways uh, because they're having to adapt now to these circumstances and it's going to question you know how they operate in under normal circumstances i think but so, certainly like you said i think it's time for people to look at their business plan and their strategy you know because if they can get through this they've still got to continue with a business after this. And often those more strategic things, you know, like you mentioned, the business continuity plan don't get looked at. It's one yeah. of the things that's sort of stuck on the pile and uh, people don't get round to it unless they're, you know, unless they're forced to often. Yeah, and you know, I think, you know, however long we're going to be <coughs> in these measures for, you know, if it's June or however long, there is going to be an end to it. We are all good, you know, so now is the time to look at the strategy and go so where, when we come out the other, other side what are we going to do as a business and mm. people are if you think about the leisure and retail industries well people are going to go out and spend money maybe not straight away but there's going to be a point where people have been inside for and isolated for so long that they're going to want to go out and enjoy the things they they enjoy so um i think you know that that's the thing is looking and going reviewing your strategies and this is a, this is an opportunity you know for if everybody's slightly quieter is for them to look at their business um it's 